reminder. Okie doke. So we're looking at acids um, and then we're done nomenclature. So we'll, we'll look at this and then we'll practice it a bit. Have your data booklets open to page six. We're going to refer to it. So an acid, what is an acid? Well, in grade 12 chemistry, we, this is like six weeks of the course. We study acids and bases. And right now we're just looking at how to name acids. So for us, we'll use a very simple definition of an acid. It's a substance which will produce hydrogen ions in water. That's a simple definition of an acid. There are better definitions, more complicated definitions, but that's usually the starting definition that's given. Because it's producing hydrogen ions in water, you get pH. pH is, is, is a way of measuring hydrogen concentration. So the capital H in pH is referring to hydrogen ions. Now, since they produce hydrogen ions, you might expect that their chemical formulas would have hydrogen ions in the formula, right? And 98% of the time, the hydrogen is at the beginning of the formula. So usually, but not always, hydrogen is at the start of the formula as a clue that it's an acid. Now, just a little wrinkle here, the worksheets that we've got are are good, they're good worksheets. They're almost too good, okay? Because they make a distinction that I won't make, okay? So if you, to be an acid, to name it as an acid, it really should be dissolved in water. That's part of the definition. So for example, HCl, on our worksheet yesterday, I think we saw HCl, it was named as hydrogen chloride because it was a gas not dissolved in water. It's named as a covalent compound, hydrogen chloride. But if you dissolve it in water and then you put AQ beside its formula, so we've been ignoring the phases up till now, solid, liquid, gas. If you see AQ beside a formula, the letter AQ, that stands for aqueous. And aqueous is a fancy chemistry way of saying dissolved in water. That's what aqueous means. So when HCl is dissolved in water, you say, oh, now I should name it as an acid, okay? So usually, or technically, acids should be aqueous in order to name them as acids. And that's actually most important for binary acids, which is what we're talking about right now, where you have just hydrogen and one other element. So aqueous, A-Q-U-E-U-O-S, I think whatever I just said, A-Q-U-E-O-U-S, aqueous. That's a lot of vowels, isn't it, in a row? So to be binary, just like everything else, you have to have just two elements. So one of them's hydrogen, again, usually at the beginning of the formula, and then the other one's going to be a simple ion. So look on page six of your data booklet. There's a whole bunch of simple anions, right? The halogens are all minus one. Sulfide is, is two minus. Arsenide is what, three minus, I think. Selenide is two minus. So if you give those things enough hydrogens to make them neutral, you've created binary acids. So down below here, we've got three examples. HCl, why does it get one H? Because Cl is charge of negative, right? Negative one. HBr gets 1H because Br is negative charge, right? H2S, the third example here, the S gets two H's because its charge is two negative, right? So it gets two H's. Now look at the names. The names all have the same pattern, don't they? Hydrochloric acid, HCl. Hydrobromic acid, HBr. Hydrosulfuric acid, H2S, right? You can see the pattern there. In all of those names, it's hydro something ic acid. And the something is just the root of the anion's name, right? Hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydrosulfuric. What would HI be? HI would be hydro iodic. 
acid. HF would be hydrofluoric acid. What would H3AS be? So arsenic would be hydroarsenic, would be how you'd say it, hydroarsenic acid. H2AS, H2SE, look where SE is, selenium, hydroselenic acid, right? L-I-U-M, you drop it and put the instead. Say again? If there's like an L-I-U-M, you drop it and put the I-U instead. If there's an I-U-M? Or an L-I-U-M? Uh, not many of those guys end in I-U-M, right? Like chlorine, bromine, mm -hmm. iodine. I guess you're dropping, it's a little bit different, but, it's, but usually you just drop the E at the end and, oh, sorry, the ein at the end and you would add ick, okay. usually. It's not always the case. It's sometimes just what sounds better to the ear, okay? All right, so that's binary acids. Pretty simple. If you see a name that says hydro something ic acid, you go, well, that's obviously an acid. It says acid. And when you see hydro at the beginning, you say it must be binary, right? But what's at the bottom of page six? Aren't there a bunch of complex ions there? Can they have hydrogens attached? Now, we've already seen that some of them, if you attach hydrogens, but not enough to make them neutral, then they're still named as ions, aren't they? So for example, carbonate, CO3, two minus, if you give it one hydrogen and becomes HCO3 minus, its name was hydrogen carbonate or bicarbonate, right? But what if you give enough hydrogens to make it neutral? then it would now be an acid, right? So when you give the complex ions enough hydrogens to be neutral, they're going to be named as acids now. But aren't there two kinds of complex ions down below? They're the ones that end in eight, like nitrate, sulfate. And then there's the ones that end in ite, nitrite, and sulfite. So we're gonna have two kinds of these acids. We're gonna call them oxy acids. That's because they usually, well, they will have oxygen in their formula, right? So they're, we're gonna have car complex ions with oxygen in their formula. So nitrate, sulfate, phosphate, um, sulfite, hypochlorite, they all have oxygen in their formula. There are a few complex ions that don't have oxygen. We'll talk about those at the very end. A simple way to think about it is as we just said, these are hydrogen ions bonded to complex ions. There's two kinds of complex ions, the eights and the ites. I hope you've been memorizing your complex ion names and formulas, right? When you do your lab later this week, there will be a short quiz in the middle of the lab on complex ion names and formulas. So when you look at these four examples, they should look familiar. If not, look at the bottom of page six. NO3 minus is nitrate, right? SO4 two minus is sulfate. CO3 two minus is carbonate. And PO4 three minus is phosphate. So they all end in eight. Notice their charges. Nitrate is minus one, and sulfate and carbonate are two minus, and phosphate is three minus. Oh, so, so, the so their, hyd their hydrogen atoms are gonna be how many per ion? Nitrate will get yeah. one hydrogen, right? Because its charge was minus. Sulfate and carbonate will get two hydrogens because their charges were two minus. Phosphate will get three hydrogens because it was three minus, right? Enough hydrogens to make them neutral. So now look at the names and do you again see a pattern? So if you had nitrate, the acid's name is nitric acid. If you had sulfate, it's sulfuric acid. If you had carbonate, carbonic acid. And if you have phosphate, phosphoric acid, right? So what do you notice is different right away in all of those acid names compared to the last ones? 
Hydro. Yeah, there's no hydro, right? So that's the thing to notice. Hydro at the beginning is for binary acids. These acids don't have hydro. Now, these were the ions that ended in eight, and all of these acid names end in ic acid, don't they? So the pattern here would be something ic acid. If it's nitrate, nitric acid. If it's sulfate, sulfuric acid. What if it was chromate? Chromic acid. Chromic acid. What if it was perchlorate? Perchloric acid. Yeah. Does that make sense? So these ones just don't have a hydro. So there's no hydro at the beginning, and it's ic acid. We saw the suffix ic earlier in the nomenclature, didn't we? Do you remember the stock system for the type 2 cations? When there was more than one charge on the cation, we use Roman numerals, right, to tell you the charge. But what was the old system? The old system was to, to use the suffix ic to mean the higher charge and to use the suffix us, O-U-S, to mean the lower charge. So if you had Fe3+, the higher charge for iron, you would have called it ferric using the old system. And the Fe2 plus would have been ferrous, right? So ic was the higher charge and us was the lower charge. Well, these acids are all using the eight ion and the eight ions have more oxygen than the eight ions, don't they? Mm -hmm. So guess what we're gonna end the eight ions with? If these guys end with ic, acid, what do you think the other acids will end in when you have an ite ion instead of an eight ion? Instead of ic acid, it's going to be us acid. The same suffix we used before, right? Ic meant the higher charge. Ic now means the higher amount of oxygen, right? Us was the lower charge. Us is the lower amount of oxygen. Right? So ions that end in ite, nitrite, sulfite, hypochlorite, chlorite, these four examples, they have less oxygen than the ions that ended in eight, nitrate, sulfate, right? Chlor <laughs> chlorate. So when you add hydrogens to these, the ass, they become acids and their names now end in us acid. So nitrite becomes nitrous acid. Sulfite becomes sulfurous acid. Does that make sense? It sounds simple when you look at it just by itself, right? Where it gets complicated is where they're all mixed together. When you have a worksheet with all different kinds of compounds, then, then it's hard to keep it all straight in your head. Yes, Nathan? So we're just looking at acids right now. Bases, there are two kinds of bases. There's strong bases, which are named as salts. So sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, those are strong bases. Then there are weak bases, which are usually organic. And so they have organic names. Our last unit in the course is gonna be on organic nomenclature. So we'll get to those at the end. Having said that, there's one base which we will know, that's ammonia. All right, so if you have your white booklets, I'm just trying to find mine here, here it is. Take out your white booklets and let's practice naming acids. We'll turn in our white booklets to page, 26. Okay, so page 26. So I'm going to stop sharing the slide here. All right, so 
this page, as you can see from the title, is only going to deal with acids, so it's not going to be as complicated as it otherwise could be if you had a whole bunch of mixed compounds. All right. So the first column of the worksheet wants to, you to put an O if it's an oxy acid, put a B if it's a binary acid, and then we're going to put the formulas and we're going to put the names. I'm not going to worry about the phases. So for me on a test or, a, or an assignment, if it just, if it says HCl, I would just expect you to say hydrochloric acid. Okay, even if it's not, if it doesn't have AQ, it won't matter to me. Okay, AQ, aqueous, right? right? We said acids should technically say AQ. We're not gonna worry about that here. All right, so let's do a few of these together. Page six of your data booklet, if you don't know your complex ions, would be helpful to have beside you. So question one, clearly that's not binary, is it? H3BO3, that's got more than two elements and it has a complex ion with oxygen, it's an oxy acid. Do you recognize BO3? And since it has three H's, it must be BO3, three minus, right? Do you recognize that? If you memorized it, that's borate, isn't it? So borate, so then the name of the acid would be? Boric acid, right? Okay. We don't put hydro unless it's a binary acid, right? We, we just wrote that in our notes. Number two, the name is hydrochloric acid. So seeing hydro at the beginning tells me this must be a binary acid which means that you have hydrogen attached to a simple ion. This is chloric acid. So from the top of page six, if you still have to look there, that's a halogen. So chlorine is a minus, right? It's a charge. So it's gonna get one hydrogen, right? To cancel out that charge. So HCl. And as I mentioned earlier on these worksheets, if it's HCl with a G beside it, gas, then technically you should call it hydrogen chloride gas. But if it's AQ beside it, then you would call it hydrochloric acid. I'm not gonna make that distinction on my tests or my assignments, but on these worksheets, that's, that's how it works. The next one is an organic acid. Okay, carbons and hydrogens in the formula are telling me it's organic. Some of you guys have studied some biology already, so you, you've done a little bit of biochemistry. Do you remember carboxylic acids as a functional group in biology? This is our last unit in this course. A carboxylic acid is, is a carbon a double bonded to an oxygen and then single bonded to what's called a hydroxyl group very similar to hydroxide, hydroxyl. And then there's one other thing attached to that carbon. That whole thing is called a carboxyl group. And so in, bio, in biology, biochemistry, or organic chemistry later in the course, we'll call this a carboxylic acid. If you look at the example down here, it's CH3COOH. So the thing attached to this carbon is another carbon with three hydrogens attached. So that's the molecule we're looking at down below. It's a carboxylic acid. And because the OH at the end, this H is the H that is given away in water. It's the, we said acids produce hydrogen ions. That's the H that gets given away, the one bonded to O. So it's a very important hydrogen atom. So we, we down here in the formula, it's not at the beginning of the formula, it's at the end with COO to make you say, oh, that must be a carboxylic acid, COOH, right? Now, some books, some questions on a, on a website, they might do this. They might say HC2H3O2. So they put the H, that's the one at the end, they put it at the beginning. And then they just took the CH3COO and they combined it two carbons, three hydrogens, and two O's. That's also the same thing, okay? What's the advantage of writing it the first way? 
you can see that it's a carboxylic acid in that first way of writing it. So that's the way I will always write it, okay? In any case, it is an oxy acid. Do you recognize CH3COO? Is that acetate? That is acetate. So if it's acetate, it's a complex ion. The acid is, you might say acetic, it's pronounced acetic, okay? Acetic acid, which is the acid found in vinegar, as you can see in the middle column. So vinegar is just a solution of acetic acid a very dilute solution of acetic acid. Okay, let's go down a bit. What about number five? That is an oxy acid. What is SO3? And since it's got two H's, it must be SO3 two minus. Well, in my memorizing, I know sulfate is SO4 two minus. So then this is sulfite. So if it's sulfite, then this acid name would be sulfurous acid, right? If it's the ite ion, it ends in us acid. Okay. So the statement at the back there was this is going to be a hard test. The test is going to be probably 15%. 20% nomenclature. So if you, if nomenclature, and there are always a handful of people where the nomenclature is just disastrous, okay? They just don't get it. So, but they don't fail the test necessarily because it's 15 to 20% of the test, right? M most people, there's always a few people that totally ace the nomenclature. Most people make a two or three little silly mistakes along the way, okay? All right. Let's do a couple more here. What's oxalic acid? It's the acid that's found in rhubarb. What part of rhubarb are you not supposed to eat? Well, the leaves, you don't eat the leaves, but the stems of rhubarb you can eat and people make pies and stuff out of rhubarb. The leaves you're not supposed to eat because they contain high amounts of oxalic acid in the leaves of rhubarb. So oxalic acid, it's an acid. How do I know it's not binary? There's no hydro. So there must be a complex ion. Oxalic, so the complex ion's name was oxalate. And now I recognize that from my name, my memorizing C2O4 2 minus, right? Now here's a little, here's a little tidbit. Why is it C2O4 2 minus? because it's actually two carboxyl groups attached back to back. That's the oxalate ion. It's two carboxyl groups attached together. That's so H2, C2O4, okay? All right, does anybody just looking down the page, does anybody see a question where they would like to do it together? Question seven. So phosphoric acid says it's used in fertilizer production. It's also found in Coca-Cola. I'm drinking my Coca-Cola. Okay. Every carbonated beverage has carbonic acid. It's carbonated because there's carbon dioxide in, in the drink. And that makes carbonic acid when it's in the water. But Coke also adds phosphoric acid to give it a little extra zip when it's in your mouth. You get a little tiny burning sensation, a pleasant burning sensation, not a really bad one. So phosphoric is not binary, right? Because there's no hydro. Phosphoric, so it must have the phosphate ion. And I've memorized phosphate is PO4 three minus. So if it's three minus, it's gonna be H3PO4, okay? Last call, does anybody else see one down below that they would like to do together before we move on? 19. 19, okay. 
I thought someone might ask 16, which has a crossed out box, right? Why, why does 16 have a crossed out box at the beginning? Because it's neither binary nor an oxy acid, right? Remember those few complex ions that don't have oxygen? This one is cyanide, isn't it? CN minus cyanide. Now, doesn't that sound like a simple ion? Like chloride or bromide or sulfide, cyanide, it, it ends in ide. So even though it's not a simple ion, it's a complex, we're gonna name it as though it is. So this guy's name would be hydrocyanic acid. So when, it, when the ion's name ends in ide, you put hydro at the beginning. 99% of the time, if it ends in ide, it was a simple ion. And so it's a binary acid. But there's cyanide. What else is down there? Is that the only one down there? I can't cyanide on the Say again. Thiocyanate. Oh, thiocyanate. Well, thiocyanate, A T E, it would be probably named as thiocyanic acid because A T E. Yeah. There's hydroxide, but if you put an H onto hydroxide, what do you get? Look at hydroxide's formula. If you put an H onto that, what are you going to have? You're going to have water, right? So don't name HOH as what? <laughs> Hydrox, no, hydrohydroxy acid. No, hydrohydroxic acid. No, it's water, <laughs> okay? H2O. All right, Nathan, you wanted 19. 19 is an oxy acid. What is SiO3 2 minus? Silicate, right? Silicate. So then this will be silicic acid. All right, turn the page. So now, page 27 we are all mixed together, okay? So now it's could be covalent, it could be an acid, it could be ionic, it could be a hydrate, it might need a Roman numeral. This is all mixed together, okay? It could be just an element. It's a whole bunch of stuff mixed together, okay? This is called in the education world, drill and kill, okay? It's give you 50 million questions, that's drill, in order to kill you. Okay, so drill and kill. Let's, let's see if we can do this. Sodium chloride. Well, isn't that a metal with a non-metal? So it is ionic, right? Sodium, don't skip it. Don't, you probably know the answer, but, but go through the process. At the top of page six, I can see sodium's an alkali metal. It's Na+. Plus. Chloride is Cl. Do you notice that I keep saying at the top of page six, but you don't see me looking at the top of page six, do you? Because no. I know it, right? Now, I'm not saying you have to go, but if you're always listening to what I'm saying, alkali metals are always one plus. Halogens are always one minus. You can learn some of that yourself, right? Not because you're using flashcards to memorize it, but because every time you do it, you say that to yourself. And then you'll find yourself knowing it, right? All right. So plus one, minus one, it's NaCl. Number two, calcium. Isn't that a metal? Calcium, it's an alkaline earth metal. So this is also ionic, right? If you see a metal at the beginning of the name, it must, or the formula, it must be ionic, right? Do all ionic compounds have a metal at the beginning? You always have to be careful, right? Do all. <laughs> if you see that on a multiple choice question, all is like, no, that can't be. No, they don't. There's 99% do, but but not all of them. What, where, where don't you see a metal at the beginning? But it's ionic. If it's a complex cation, right? Ammonium is NH4 positive, right? So the cation in an ionic compound is almost always a metal, 
but not always. There are those complex cations that are on your list of ions to memorize. So this guy is calcium, and then what's CO3? That's carbonate, right? So calcium carbonate. Take time to read the stuff in the middle. Sometimes it's kind of interesting. Did you know calcium carbonate is marble, limestone, and chalk? That's kind of interesting. Environmental science, that's important, okay? That's important. Anything that has a shell in the ocean, right? Lobster, uh, coral reefs, they're made of calcium carbonate, right? Sodium bisulfite, sodium, that's a metal. This is ion. So sodium alkali metal is Na plus, bisulfate, bisulfate. Okay, so that's an old name, isn't it? Bisulfate. What's its new name? Page six at the bottom. The new name for bisulfate is hydrogen sulfate. So now I can put it together. Sulfate is SO4 two minus. Hydrogen sulfate or bisulfate would be HSO4. And now its charge isn't two minus, it's minus, right? Not because I've memorized that, because I've figured it out. Sulfate is two minus, yes, I memorized that. But then I put an H plus with that. So now it must be minus, right? Plus one minus one, just one of each. Sodium hydroxide. These are these are all a lot of these are ionic, aren't they? That's ionic. You were asking about bases earlier. That's a strong base. And so Na is plus. Hydroxide is a complex ion, right? The bottom of the page. It's OH negative plus one minus one. It's NaOH. How about number six? What are Epsom salts? Bath salts, yes. You can buy them at the drugstore and get a big bag, take it home. Next time you're having a bath, you put some a cup or so of Epsom salt in the bath water, and it's supposed to help with your skin and circulation and stuff like that. It's like people in Israel, they go they go soak where in the in the Dead Sea, right? Which is salty, salty water. So it's the same idea. So Epsom salt is this particular compound. What, what is that? It looks kind of complicated, scary. Magnesium is a metal, isn't it? Ionic. And then it's got a dot 7H2O. This is the hydrated salt, isn't it? Our lab this week is going to be to take hydrated salts and heat them to drive off the water. And then we'll figure out the percent water that was in the hydrated salt. That's what we're doing in the lab. So what's SO4? Um, sulfate, right? So that's magnesium sulfate. But what's the dot 7H2O? Oh, I got to say something hydrate, don't I? And what's seven? Septa. Close, not septa, but hepta, right? So this is hepta hydrate. There's a lot of stuff to memorize in this first unit, right? Mm -hmm. Flashcards are your friend. I mean that. Okay? You should have a set of flashcards where the prefixes of the different uh, hydrates, the definitions, who invented what. And you're using them to study for the test. You're pulling out flashcards when you've learned them. You're putting them back in just to review them. You keep them until the end of the course. You keep them until you write the AP exam. Who knows? That's a good way to study things that you memorize, right? Yes, Nathan. I'm confused about the INA. About what? The, the well, so far we've only seen ionic compounds. Let's look at number seven. Number seven carbon dioxide. Carbon's not a metal, is it? Carbon's a non-metal, and so is oxygen, a non-metal. Then this is two non-metals, and when you have two non-metals together, that's a covalent compound, and another name for covalent is molecular, 
because covalent compounds are made of molecules. The other clue that that was molecular was that there was a prefix in the name, right? Dioxide, that's where you use prefixes in covalent compounds. So carbon has one carbon atom and dioxide is two oxygen atoms. So that's CO2. Go down to question number 018. Its old name was muriatic acid. It's found in your stomach, gastric acid, gastric fluids. So it's an acid. It's got two elements, it's binary. So its name will start with hydro, right? So it's an acid, I'm gonna put an A at the beginning. It is binary, so it's hydro something ic acid and there's chlorine in there. So it's hydrochloric acid. Some of them have X's in the box for the first column because they're not compounds. So for example, number 20, uh, 22, iron and carbon. Well, they make alloys of steel. So iron is just Fe and Carbon is just C. Sometimes an element is weird. There's the Hofbrinkel elements, right? The ones that are diatomic, so O2, H2, F2, etc. And then some of them are just weird. They're like sulfur is usually S8, phosphorus is usually P4. But otherwise, most elements are just going to be their symbols on the periodic table. Take a look at number page 28. Page 28. I'm trying to find some here that are a little bit harder. How about uh, number 45? Question 45. Stannous fluoride. Now I said I said I would not ask you to come up with the name of an older name, but I did say you should recognize them, right? So number one, do you recognize that that's an ionic compound and that, that it's using the older system of naming? What is Stannis? That's tin. Yeah, that's why tin's got the symbol SN because it comes from Stannis in Latin. All right, so now I got to remember us, Stannus. What does that mean when it's us at the end? It's the lower charge for tin. So now I can look on page six, or I remember what are tin's charges? It can be plus two, or sorry, two plus, or it can be four plus, right? So if it's the lower charge, it must be tin two plus. And then fluoride, that's the halogen, just F minus, right? So that's gonna be SN F two. Okay. Stannis is a metal. Right, 10. All right, now there's a few that are weird. We saw them on other worksheets earlier. Methane, number four, or, sorry, number 49, methane. I think I said that's one you should know. We're gonna learn it later in the organic chemistry unit, but methane is CH4, it's natural gas. It's the gas that you fart. It's the gas that we burn when we burn Bunsen burners or your furnace at home might be burning natural gas. Right above it is something made from methane. It's an alcohol. It's got OH attached to the carbon. That's an alcohol from biology. People might recognize that functional group, but it's got, it's made from methane because it has only one carbon. So the acid, the alcohol's name is methanol. There's only non-metals in those formulas, right? So there must be molecular compounds, aren't they? Covalent. The next one is sucrose. That's again, biology. Sucrose is a disaccharide, right? Two glucose, I don't know if, it, I don't, actually don't know if it's glucose, but two simple sugars like glucose, C6H1206, stuck together. 
but when you stick them together, you got to take away a water. So C6H12O6, that's glucose. So two of them would be C12H24, but I got to take away a water. So H22 and then O12, but I got to take away a water. So O11, that would be sucrose. It's glucose times two minus water. It's carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. It's molecular, isn't it? Number 47 is like the one below it. Do you guys know how alcohols are made? D distillation, right? You guys did simple distillation in the lab in grade nine, but you were just distilling mixtures of liquids. If you distill like the mat, you put yeast and things in grapes, crushed grapes or crushed potato or crushed vegetable matter, you, it, they create alcohol and then you distill it and you get different kinds of alcohol, wine and vodka and other things like that. But if you distill wood, just wood, then you get a whole bunch of top weird things, but you, among all the things you get is methanol. So methanol is sometimes called wood alcohol, but the alcohol we drink is called grain alcohol. That's ethanol. Okay, so I told you on an earlier worksheet to know what, which ones. I think I told you to know methane. Is that right? Was there another one I told you to know on an earlier worksheet? To get at Nathan's question a moment ago, I did not expect you to know all of these guys, right? These older names. Yeah, ammonia and methane were those the only two? It was on page 17 in your booklet. Ammonia NH3 and methane CH4. I asked you to know those two. The other ones, no, I don't expect you to know them for your test. Okay. All right, it is 326. I've had enough. Why don't we call it a day? Um, you have you, now as you work through these sheets, do a little bit tonight, do a little bit tomorrow. You're gonna have two hours to work on stuff on uh, later this week. You've got a second little package there. You can do some of that too. We're going to do some of it on Monday as well in class together. It's mostly review at this point for our test next week. Okay. Mr. Uh, among all of these questions, you should expect there's going to be a handful that you don't get, that you don't recognize. You, don't, you should expect that. Okay. So I just put a star beside them and you can ask me when we get to class. Okay. I have a pretty good, if I do say so myself, YouTube video on nomenclature practice. I think it's got like, I forget, 30 or 40 questions where all I do in the video is, here's the formula, let's work through the name. Here's the formula, let's work through the name. Here's the name, let's work through the formula. So I'll put the link to that video on Google Classroom if you want, if you have time and you feel the need to review, most people who've watched it think it's a very good review for them because I explain every question, okay? All right, folks at home, we'll see you tomorrow. We'll ch check at the start of class together. And then those who are here are gonna do a lab. Otherwise I'll dismiss you tomorrow and you'll work on those worksheets. Take care.